Welcome to Meanwhile in Turkey, Turkey's only crowdfunded English-speaking news show. We have a great show for you today. We're going to talk about the deer hunter. We're going to talk about uh, the HTP being closed down. We're going to introduce you to a man called Ömer Faruk Gergelioğlu. We're also going to talk about the LGBT. And finally, I'm going to reveal something to you about Turkey that you can take to the bank. Let's go! Remember the movie, The Deer Hunter? At the beginning of the movie, you know, they have a beautiful deer hunting scene. Well, us Turks took it to a whole new level. Two guys in Zonguldak decided to steal a deer, kill it, and then eat it. The deer was in a zoo. They stole a deer from a zoo. You know how much of a lazy moron you have to be to steal a deer from a zoo and then kill it and then eat it. What's next? You know, I heard uh, Istanbul Zoo has beautiful lions. Mmm, a little lion shish kebab. Or maybe a little penguin sashimi would be nice, huh? In any case, they were caught, arrested and sent to jail. Good riddance. Dear, I mean, who does that? Remember a while ago the Boazic University protests? Let me refresh your memory. It didn't really start with LGBT, but the whole blame was put on the LGBT community, the LGBT groups there, because they had done an art of one of Islam's holiest places, the Kaaba, uh, on a painting. The president said, you know, what is this LGBT community? They don't belong in Turkey. The Ministry of Interior shouted that they have no place in our uh, country. The typical hate speech, you know, that one. Well, some of them have been arrested and are being tried for creating uh, religious hate, which basically means making a mockery of Islam and things like that. The funny part about this whole conversation, even though there's nothing funny about this, is the main judge turned around to one of the uh, people who were actually giving their defense and said, are you a member of the LGBT? But when he said member, he actually thought that it was actually like, you know, are you a member of, I don't know, the NRA or Galatasaray or any other club where basically you carry a card that says, hey, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm the lesbian or I'm the gay one or I am all of them, which is impossible, but, you know. The funny part about this, even though there's nothing funny about it, uh, is that the judge doesn't even know what the LGBT means. You know, he thinks that it's a club that, you know, people get together on weekends and do LGBT stuff, which is perfectly normal. That's the Turkey I want to be in, you know, when the LGBT is part of my society, not the other way around. For a country that's trying to modernize itself, you would actually think that no matter how you pull it, no matter how you divide it up, no matter which way you want to change the literature, the language of the law, at the end of the day, these people are going to be prosecuted because they're part of the LGBT community, not club community. And that's the community we should protect. Let me introduce you to Ömer Faruk Gergelioğlu. He's a member of the Turkish parliament representing the HDP and the region of Kocaeli. In 2016, he was sentenced to two and a half years in jail for tweeting a picture uh, depicting mothers behind a symbolic coffin draped in a Turkish flag and one with the Kurdish workers flag. The PKK. PKK, don't forget, is a terrorist organization. Now, the whole idea behind this picture was, you know, to symbolize uh, peace and to symbolize the fact that at the end of the day, it's the mothers who cry the most after their children, who cries the most after their loved ones. It was a peaceful tweet. But nonetheless, he was still tried and convicted for two and a half years. He was subsequently fired from his job from the state hospital in Izmir. You know, he's a doctor at the end of the day, a pulmonologist actually. But he kept on doing his work. You know, he's one of those guys that battled uh, human rights, that battled the people who don't have a voice. It doesn't exactly have to be all Kurdish. I mean, actually, it wasn't all about Kurdish problems. It was every Turkish problem. He was basically the voice of the people of which their human rights were violated. 
Women, children, Kurds, Turks, everybody's rights. In 2018, though, he retweeted an article stating that if the PKK takes the initiative, peace can be achieved within a month. That was basically the article. The article was printed on T24, which is a you know, news website. Because of that retweet, two days ago, he was stripped of his parliamentary membership, hence making him no longer a member of the General Assembly and taking his immunity clause. You know, members of the parliament have immunity. They can't, they're not allowed, they can't go to jail for pri previous convictions unless they do something right now. And guess where he is now? As we speak today, he's still at the General Assembly. He doesn't have his immunity anymore. He's not a member of parliament. But because of this whole charade that's happening around him, he decided to, I'm not going to leave. He decided that he's not going to leave the General Assembly unless police come and take him out of it. Now, you may not agree with all everything that he said, but the most interesting part about Omar Faru Gagalulu is that he's a graduate of religious vocational schools. Yeah. He's a graduate of religious vocational schools. You know, the schools where the AKP believes that the new generation of Democrat Islamists are going to come from. He's a graduate from that and he w w goes on to become a doctor. I got another one for you. He's not Kurdish. Yeah, he's a member of the HDP or was a member of the HDP, but he's not Kurdish at all. He's just a guy fighting for people's rights. And this is the treatment we give him. Such a shame. He could have been a beautiful example of the AKP. Vocational religious school, becomes a go ahead and becomes a doctor, fights for human rights. Almost feels like that's how the AKP started at the beginning. But that was a long time ago. Things change in this country very quickly. Two days ago, the Supreme Court applied to the Constitutional Court to close down the HDP, Turkey's only Kurdish political party. This is the seventh political party the Kurds had. Had as in they used to have. See, we've closed all seven of them. This was the seventh one. Every four or five years, we keep on doing this. A Kurdish political party comes. We always say to ourselves how democratic we are. We're wonderful. This is great democracy. You know, the Kurds should have a say, should have a voice in our structure, in our country. We're very happy about it. They come to Congress. They have 20%, 30% of the votes. And don't forget, Kurds are about 20 million in Turkey out of 80 million. And then... The moment we realize that we actually don't want them there, we start using the same words. Oh, they're part of the PKK. This Kurdish political party is attached to the PKK. They're the mouthpiece of the PKK. And then what happens? We go ahead and do exactly the same thing. Suddenly we turn things around and we're like, you know what? We're not very happy with these Kurds in our Congress. So why don't we just close the political party down? And finally, for the 21st century, this is our first Kurdish political party we're closing down and it's not going to be the last. I can guarantee you. Because there's one thing that's very relevant in this country. You see, we keep on doing the same things over and over and over again, expecting different results every single time. How insane is that? That was Einstein's quote, by the way. Now, not only are we going to close down the HTP, there's also going to be a ban on 600 HDP members to stop doing politics. It's a political ban. Oh, by the way, this law that we're talking about, this law, by the way, goes back 30 years. It was created by the junta who took over the government in a military coup in the 1980s. You know who was a member of a political party that closed down? Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Yeah. He was also the mayor of Istanbul then. His political party got shut down because the main opposition thought that, you know, we don't want the Islamic parties here and they shut them down. So he then went ahead and created the AKP. I mean, have we learned nothing from our own history? All these things that we keep on doing, it always goes back to the same exact point. When will we ever change? 
When are we going to do something different? When is anybody going to talk about something different? I get the whole idea of, let's close down the HTTP because they're connected to the PKK. Fine, let's close it down. What are we going to do now? What do you have instead? What should people do when they can't find a voice in Congress? Please, somebody tell me because I'm out of words. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I tweeted something about my dad a couple of days ago. Funny enough, he said the exact same words in 1994 when they closed down the second Kurdish political party. He turned around and said, of course we have to fight terrorism, but the main fight and where we're going to solve this problem is going to be in Congress, nowhere else. I guess it fell on deaf ears. When I tweeted that, since the day I showed that video, 300,000 people have watched it. Man, I really wish he was here today. I really do. I really wish my dad was here so that he could be heartbroken. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to watch, like, share, subscribe, and just, you know, do stuff. See you next time.